Okay, we have here another integral. This one's from MIT 2025 semifinals, round two, problem two. We have the integral from zero to one, natural log x over square root x minus x squared dx. Okay, I have a few different ways to do this one, but I really like this method, so I'm not too focused on the other ways, but I could do some other videos. What I wanna to do to start is just deal with this right here. Of course, we can factor that, like factoring out an x, and then we can break it up. So I can write this as square root of x times square root one minus x. But what that allows me to do is then I can bring both these into the numerator and just write it, instead of writing it as square root, I can write this as x to the minus one half. But then I also wanna change these exponents and write those a little bit different. Instead of writing that as minus one half, I can write that as one half minus one and do the exact same thing over here. Cover that up and what you have left here Focusing on these input, focusing on these, focusing on these exponents here, what's left is just the beta function. So for this integral here, we can actually look at this as the derivative of the beta function. I did a previous video on this deriving it. It's just Feynman's trick. What you can do, create an integral without this and parameterize. I think you could do it either way, but the way I did it was parameterize this. We'll call this A, we'll call this B. Now I'm not gonna do it up because I have that other video, so I'll give you a link to that. But when you differentiate it, if we have, let's say we have the beta function, just using this notation for the beta function where it's just gonna be this integral here. And our definition for this is gonna be in terms of the gamma function. So it's gonna be gamma of A times gamma of B over the sum of those two, A plus B. So when you do Feynman's trick on it and you have something like x to the a where x is a constant, you differentiate, you get x to the a ln x. So that's how we get it back to this. So all we really need to do is differentiate on both sides. We differentiate the beta function, we get this integral. We differentiate the right side, we're gonna get our formula. So let's just do the derivative on this with respect to a, we're gonna fix the b value on it and just differentiate with respect to a here. So what I'll do is I'll take that gamma B up front as a constant, and then with what's left, just focusing on this part, now we just have quotient rule. So derivative of this, derivative of the first part is gonna be derivative gamma A, and then just bring along this here, minus gamma A, and then derivative of the denominator, so gamma, derivative gamma A plus B. And then we're just gonna have this denominator squared here. I didn't plan my space that well, so what I'll do is we'll just like build a wall right here between these so we know these things are separate. But then I wanna simplify this formula. Really, I don't want these derivatives in here because I don't really know how to calculate that except for to relate it to the digamma function. The definition for the digamma function is, what is it? It's gonna be, actually, it's gonna be the derivative here with respect to z of the natural log of gamma of z. So when you do that out, and you just take that derivative, you're just gonna get one over gamma z chain rule derivative of gamma of z. But then I can just multiply a gamma on both sides, and then we have an equation here, or a formula here for the derivative of the gamma function. So using that in our formula, we still have this constant up front, then for this piece, use this thing, so it's gonna be gamma A, digamma A, gamma A plus B. Then on the rest of the stuff, gamma A. And we're already breaking down this wall here. Okay, so get rid of this wall. And then here on this thing, same formula, we're gonna have gamma A plus B, digamma A plus B all over this thing here. But then I can cancel this, this, and one of these, just factoring out the common term. Then we also have gamma A everywhere, so I can factor that out. So what we're gonna have, factoring out the gamma A, we have gamma A, gamma B, writing it with this pulled out, we'll have gamma A plus B, and then all that's left is gonna be digamma A minus digamma A plus B. But simplifying it just a little bit more, this thing right here, you'll notice is the beta function that we started with. So in our formula, we can just I mean, it's the same thing, but we can write it like this, beta function AB times digamma A minus digamma A plus B. 
So this thing right here, this will be our formula we can use on the integral. Okay, so using our formula here with our values a one half, b one half, that's gonna help a lot with our calculation that we got some nice values there. And so I just plugged in everywhere here, one half and one half, that's just one. So let's start with the beta function and write it out. So this is gonna be the same thing as gamma one half times gamma one half over gamma of the sum of those, so gamma of one. And then let's just clean it up a little bit. We have di gamma one half minus di gamma of one. And then I notice everything we have left almost, I've done a video on, I don't think I've ever done a video on gamma of one, but I've done a video on gamma one half. Gamma one half has a well-known value of square root of pi. So we have here square root of pi times square root of pi. So multiplying those together, we're gonna have a pi right here. Gamma of one, we can relate this to factorials with this formula, gamma n plus one is n factorial, so this is zero factorial, or just one, so we'll just ignore that. Di gamma one half, there's, I think there's a few ways to do it. Um, yeah, there's definitely a few different ways to do it. Let me actually use the multiplication formula really quick. So let's just look at the multiplication formula and we'll plug into that. So it's kind of a complicated formula. I'm just gonna go through it quick, but I do have a playlist on the di gamma function if you want more details on this. But the way I'm gonna set it up, I'm gonna set my, let's see, let's set our z value to one half and our n value to two. That's because we're going for di gamma one half. So that usually works nice that way. So then if n's two, so what we have just plugging in, it's gonna be one half here. Then n minus one is gonna be a one. So we're just going zero to one here on this sum of di gamma one half plus k over two. Then again, n is two, so it's gonna be an ln two over here. Now notice on the left side of the equation here, two times a half, we just created a one here. Now di gamma one has a well-known value though. It's just the Euler, it's just minus the Euler Mascheroni constant. So I'm just gonna write that right in here. This is the same thing as the minus Euler Mascheroni constant. We can also, we're also gonna do it up here, same value. So let me kind of come over here where I've got some space to try to finish this. So we have one half, just summing out two terms here. When K is zero, we just have di gamma of one half, which is what we want. And then for the next term, we plug in a one. We end up with di gamma of one half plus one half. We end up with di gamma one again. So di gamma one, we'll just plug that in. That's gonna be again, minus the constant. And then we have ln two. So all I need to do is solve for this. I'll multiply in by two on both sides. Do it here. We're gonna have minus two Euler Mascheroni constant. Then when I do it, I'm gonna multiply in here. It's gonna cancel with that. So we're gonna have di gamma one half. Then again, it's gonna cancel on that as well. So we have minus the constant plus two ln two. And then all we need to do, when we bring this on the other side, we're gonna have minus Euler Mascheroni constant. So solving for di gamma of one half, what we're gonna get on is gonna be minus Euler Mascheroni constant minus two ln two, and that's gonna be the value we can plug in right here. So let's see if we can pull it all together. We plug in, we got minus Euler Mascheroni constant minus two ln two. And then here minus times minus is plus on the constant, but now we can cancel the constants, just subtracting this one from this one, that goes away. Putting it together for my final solution on this, we just get minus two pi ln two, and that's it. All right, so there you have it. Good one from MIT 2025. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.